Entitled to worship, we send our most choicest salutations upon our master Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, upon his noble household, upon his pure spouses, upon his honorable companions, and upon each and every one of us until the day of judgment. So, alhamdulillah, dear respected brothers and sisters, this is just uh, one of the presentations, or I would say a part of one of the presentations, if it is for purposes of education, which is harming the Muslims or the Muslim community or faith in general or the oneness of God, and you have an academic material that you're present, presenting out there, then this is something wajib. Yes, it is obligatory to fight these notions in a sophisticated, rational, as well as professional way. So, inshallah, just to give you an overview regarding these the social media and many of many of the other blessings that we enjoy allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the quran وَسَخَّرَ لَكُمْ مَا فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَمَا فِي الْأَرْضِ جَمِيعًا مِّنْ that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala subjugated for you whatever is in the heavens and the earth this these platforms which provide us the unique opportunity to you know communicate very easily, to give a message out there, to have friends uh, share a happy moment with us. This is one of the greatest blessings, right? But like any blessing, however, social media also comes with its harms and its disturbing elements. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave humanity grape, they made wine out of it. Subhanahu wa ta'ala gave humanity various elements, you know, food. At times they mocked it or they tweaked it to such an extent that it became harmful for the body. So like anything, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has provided for us. This too is, everybody knows the definition of social media. You can read it up here if you want, you know, to just taste the academic portion of this. Uh, presentation, but of course we understand that so as we'll understand almost everybody in this world uses LinkedIn, that's social media, right? So it's widespread and of course it relates to uh, networking, micro-blogging online, it could refer to micro-vlogging nowadays as well, such as YouTube, you know, sharing ideas, informational information, personal messages with friends, family, enemies, you know, this is the social media that we have amidst us. When it comes to a brief analysis about social media, about 4.65 billion social media users around the world exist. And this is the statistics from April 2022, a little bit right before, you know, the conference happened. And this equates to 58.7 of the world. Use and an to have whatever you're viewing often. So, if you're viewing, for example, you know, uh, pop culture videos or different, you know, uh, perverted elements, it'll bring you that on your for you page. If you're listening to religious talk, it'll bring religious talk on your for you page, right? If you're listening to Arabic poetry, which is my go to thing, then it'll bring you know, Arabic poetry. If you're listening to motivation and inspiration, your entire feed will become of that likeness. So sometimes, you know, when I was at home with my mother, I only spent time at home, you know, during the days I was in Canada, uh, except for the days where I went to Niagara Falls and these places. So I, I said, you know what? Let me try to see what TikTok is about in terms of, you know, it's poetry or poetic element, Arabic poetry, the Islamic sciences. So I went scrolling and scrolling and scrolling. And then now TikTok has a feature where, where it shows you uh, how much time you spend screen time on TikTok alone. So you get so carried and ended up for a thing that you watch. So that sort of passed the average. Just uh, this was a part of uh, Sheikh Omar. Uh, from Naperville, he actually did this. Naperville, he actually did this research. So he did a brief analysis of 
uh, social media users in Muslim Middle Eastern Arab countries. So in terms of Egypt, Lebanon, Qatar, Saudi Arabia, uh, and the UAE, these are some of the countries that they looked at in terms of statistics. Inshallah, I'll send you his paper after, you know, via email so you can benefit and have a research paper, a uh, scholarly research paper handy with you where he cites you know, the references for this as well. So on, on platforms such as Facebook, it's about 80% of the population. Uh, I have seen in some of these places that they don't have food to eat on a daily basis, but they will have a phone. So this is part and parcel of humanity. This is not going anywhere. Those that they rely upon comes through social fabricated elements. Right? And then this is what they are consumed in. Um, so we need to definitely be wary of uh, setting bounds in our usage. I don't know if the sisters can see, but I'll sort of... Um, read this through, uh, there are hundreds, you know, you, when you say social media, many people just think of Facebook, Twitter, Snapchat, WhatsApp, uh, you know, Instagram, and in recent times, TikTok, but there's hundreds and thousands of platforms, platforms made for, uh, you know, plat platforms made for even spying, platforms made for marriage turned into dating, right, platforms made for dating, platforms you know, made for hurting others, sending a rude mail to them, you know, different, different platforms for uh, bringing about crank calls on people, a scary crank call, you know. So there's hundreds and thousands of uh, uh, social media, people have, people have, uh, you know, posted entirely fake profiles on Instagram. They, they'll go to somebody's beer or their merc and take a nice selfie and say, Yaqi, this is mine, you know? Habibi, this is my stuff. And then people expose them that, you know what, this is not you at the end of the day. You're just going behind somebody else's cars and houses and, you know, glimmer and glamour and shooting these photos. So Instagram uh, made people fake. Uh, so, uh, sorry, that's not the fun of the, <laughs> the app, I'm just saying that. Uh, at times it makes people fake, uh, and in total, any of these platforms, if you don't watch yourself or if you don't, you know, catch yourself, you know, uh, you find funny and entertaining content, uh, you find information about brands and products, the ads, then there's, uh, you know, Pinterest, Reddit, keep up to date with world news, Snap, like the officer from Sheriff's office was telling us last week, people think that your photo goes away on Snapchat. I guarantee you I can bring all those, even if it goes away, it is somewhere flying in the cloud there uh, that people can sort of bring back. So we need to be wary of what we post, you know, as Muslims especially, we need to have that Allah consciousness that we don't post anything that will get us in trouble or that may cause havoc for us in the future, right? I'll give you a story. When I was in South Africa studying the Adamiya program, a very brutal incident happened, either when I was there or prior to me coming in a little bit. This was when uh, Facebook came out first, or when it got famous. When Facebook came out, people were making all sorts of their own personal profiles, as well as private or fake profiles. So in that midst, one of the brothers, and Sheikh Suleiman Mullah was telling us about this, I believe he even counseled the family, uh, one of our teachers. He counseled the family after what I'm about to tell you about. So this, whatever, you know, he changes the name. It's somebody with once again a fake profile. And then they start chatting. This is pass by, months pass by, you know. And they decide now to meet up. And subhanAllah, this is at times a lesson from Allah for when we don't watch our limits or we engage in things that Allah has prohibited. They decide to meet at some coffee shop or some sort of a shop and then, you know, get, get the relationship on from there. When the father arrives at that eatery, 
he sees his daughter there. She's like, what are you doing here? So she's in shock. So, what are you doing here? You know. And then they find out that they were chatting with each other. Both of them at once killed themselves. And imagine the, the, the impact. Because it was not only uh, conversations such as, hi, how are you? It was intimate matters that were discussed. They couldn't take the burden of that, of what they've said, what they said to each other. On the spot, they killed themselves. And this is not a once in a lifetime occur that it's your daughter and you said some of the worst things. It's your father and you said some of the worst things. Take... <sighs> These things come with much responsibility. And how many a times, as we'll see, you know, different youth coming on YouTube and during their live feed because of bullying and pressure and drugs, they commit suicide on life. Yeah? So, alhamdulillah, our community is not there, inshallah. But it is definitely a wake-up call for our youth as well. And then there's Twitter. People keep up to date with news. Send a silly uh, sort of a few words or some inspirational message uh, or photo information. And then once again, Snapchat, uh, where it goes away, but it doesn't go away. You're at the picture that you post. So social media has had a profound impact on the youth as well. And, you know, young adults and the, the impact that it's had on youth is very noteworthy. 95%, and this is a research, pure research from 2018, of adolescents age, so 13 to 18, 18-ish, they have access to a smartphone. You know? And maybe times have changed, I don't know, but I believe or not legitimate. And 45% of U.S. You know, adolescents, they were online almost constantly, right? including in their classrooms or their masjids. I went to lead Tarawih at one occasion in Moline, Illinois, with my mentor, Sheikh Saad Beg, when he was there. And I had an occasion, I remember practicing my Quran before Taraweeh, and Sheikh Saad rushes into the masjid, angry, bangs the door, said, relax, you know, what's, I know the Jews is hard, but relax, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll make it happen. He said, you know, you, do you even know what happened? He said, I caught people in the back of the masjid, Individuals who are 8, 9, 10, 11 years old watching explicit material through the phones that they had in their hands. And this is the irresponsibility on part of their parents and their elders and their leaders who don't educate themselves about filtering the content that, they, that comes that they've provided for their children. Uh, uh, really, I, I uh, relate, relate peer influence. You know, people are easily influenced on, on social media. You know, hey, click on this link. So you might say, once you have that bad friend, or once you have that wrong other, and a pious friend is better than solitude. So peer pressure being two people, or this could also mean you see different behaviors online and you all of a sudden want to imbibe those behaviors. Notice that if you sit down with a particular group of people and you are with them constantly, you will begin talking, acting, possibly even dressing and eating like them. This is what human beings are. And Allah's Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam tells us that al-mu'minu miratu al-mu'min, that a believer is a mirror of another believer. Whatever is reflected upon you, you will buy it. This, this is us. You know, we are machines and we are, uh, you know, creations which love copying and pasting. Um, being exposed, exp uh, sorry, exposed to suicide and self-harm. This is so common on social media. Uh, social comparison leading to depression. This has happened to myself. You know, why does so, and in my young days, why does so and so have this many followers and likes? How come I can't you know, get this many followers and likes? I don't know if you remember Brother Ali. Uh, 
my friend who came to visit me was upon a time were on social media that you know posting nobody would really interact with my posts up till now nobody interacts with my posts but at that time he said you know it was snowing heavy snow so he said that you know what these likes and whatnot they should be like this snow that is falling sometimes he would say the the most beautiful weirdest things he said that it'll melt and go away and nobody will even care about it you do what you have to do uh, you know immobile and unfunction categories that i've mentioned number one displacement of activities people abandon prayers they don't function in terms of talking anymore i was sitting down with one of our youths and i have a conversation I say oh how are you so and so so he says i'm all right goes back to his phone like, okay so when have you been here since it was at a, a shop a particular shop he said oh i've been here since this much you know this time goes back to his phone like forget this i'm not going to talk to this guy anymore yalla you know go go back to your phone people can't even have conversations anymore you know you notice pe before when you were younger you would go to the doctor's office everyone's talking to each other right what are you here for what are you here for not not the prison the doctor's office what are you here for right now nobody talks to each other right and psychologically it's been shown as well that when you have a phone in your hand and you're talking to another person uh, subconsciously there is a reduction of their honor or the re in their subconscious mind they feel that you don't have an adequate amount of respect for them that is why anytime you're speaking to somebody you know just put that phone aside and then speak to them face to face this is truly where we need to Im implement that sunnah of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam yani kana yatakallamu ma'a rajulin wajhan bi wajhin you know face to face he would face the person and he would let the person finish before he would commence speaking so there's that displacement, sleepless nights because of, once again, behavioral elements that you've seen online or the depression that you got through, uh, you know, why isn't so-and-so following me? Or why did this girl block me? Or why did this guy block me? Or why did I not get this many likes? You can't sleep. Envy, which is so bad, right? S spiritually, it consumes you. Envy, hasad. So, in al hasana, eh, sorry, in al hasada, uh, that, you know, hasad, jealousy, envy, it consumes your good deeds like, like fire consumes firewood, turns it into ashes. Two common meanings of this hadith is that hasad consumes you in such a way that you can't function anymore. Or Whatever hasanat you've previously accumulated, it literally burns them up. You can't function anymore, hence you can't do good deeds anymore. So it's a burnt path ahead. So envy is so common on social media. Even among the du'at and the mashaykh, those who are in callers to Allah, trying to put each other down because of their either particular groups or they don't agree with one another's views. Sheikh Sulaiman Mullah, Hafizahullah, he puts it beautifully that I feel sad for some of these mashayikh. Low wages killed them in this dunya, and hasad and envy for each other and cursing each other destroyed their akhirah. So this has crept everywhere, this envy. And may Allah protect us from it. And then, to cite the obvious explicit material as we've given the example from Sheikh Saad's uh, Masjid in Moulin explicit material is um, you know is very accessible different research shows that by the age of 10 most children have already viewed pornographic or explicit material so let's have some real talk here social media is here to stay it's not going anywhere. It is imperative upon Muslim families, parents, elders to provide possible proper guidelines for their young ones if they are on social media. I would say the objective or 
the, the preference should be they shouldn't even be on social media if they don't need to be. But if they are, then make sure you're keeping tabs on them. They should be keeping tabs on you as well. Right? You are their qudwa. You are their, you are their primary example, their role model. Keep tabs on each other. Let there be transparency. If, I am hi if I'm not hiding anything on my phone, why do I care if my father or mother looks at my phone? Right? The problem arises when I am trying to hide something which may possibly get me in tr trouble in the future or really destroy my dunya before the akhirah. Right? So have that transparency in between you. Yes, there are private elements where you don't barge into your growing child's room. She might be dressing, he might be dressing. These are limits that Allah has set. But there should be no such limits which keep major matters a secret from the entire family, especially when it comes to you know, these phones. Uh, I was having a discussion with a Saudi colleague today, a Saudi colleague. We were sitting down and for the longest time we were just chatting about different elements you know, that are taking place uh, in the lives of the youth. And one of the things that I told him that you cannot seek a spouse, you cannot seek a spouse for yourself like the olden days. It's impossible. Right? You cannot have that one meeting and khalas. Impossible. You know, anybody who does that, I would say there's something terribly wrong with you. Because today, generally people have two lives. They are one person in front of people and another on their phones. Two different people. I'm not saying everybody's like that. But hence, you need to really be vigilant in choosing that sharikul hayat for yourself or sharikatul hayat, somebody who will share life with you. And there are premises for that. The Prophet ﷺ's engagement with Aisha was very long, right? About two or three years. There is a premise for that. Even if it's six months, seven months that you get to know each other, uh, in a halal way, in a halal context, through the medium of, the, of her uh, chaperones and parents, likewise yours, then there's no issues with that. But that one look, mustahil, it will work today. Mustahil. That you go, mashallah, you know, like so and so's, uh, so, you know, so, somebody told me that so and so, their uncle teaches Sahih al Bukhari. All right, okay, khair, inshallah, they're good. What do you mean? Oh, so, so their uncle teaches Sahih al Bukhari, so they must be the awliya of our time. No, you need to really be reasonable in this regard, rational. So, <clears throat> so it is very imperative that we keep tabs on ourselves as well as our children. Enhance. Uh, sorry, yeah, enhance by limiting contact, con content and filtering access when possible. Wherever it's possible, you know, now that, nowadays they have YouTube kids. They have filtering options for Google. They have filtering options for TikTok as well. If you're on these things, like myself, filter, you know, filter these elements so you don't end up slipping, even by chance. Um... And yeah, ensure that they are, and yourself, you are not away from your social, religious uh, work obligations. Ensure that you keep that balance. Two and a half hours is a lot to be on these platforms a day. And we need to re definitely cut down. Be more productive, you know. Spend time with your family. Spend time with your friends. Two and a half, ha half hours in a day is, is too much to be on these apps. Let me ask you in re retrospection, or in contrast to that, how much time do we spend with the book of Allah or learning about the deen? Is it in comparison to that equal or more? If not, then we definitely need to uh, you know, review our uh, privileges as well as our priorities. All right, so inshallah, this is basically uh, the end of the first portion. And then um, the second, just a very quick overview of the ahkam. Um, yeah. Uh, Brother Kareem, how do you... Uh, one minute. Google. Google Docs. No. All right. One minute. All right. So Sheikh Omar also highlights the the rulings of social. Inshallah, I'll send this to you. All right.
Yeah. Oh, sorry. All right. Islamic principles relevant to the ruling of social media. Okay. We need to understand that there cannot be a general uh, rule regarding particular apps. So, for example, I can't come about and say TikTok is haram or Instagram is haram or Instagram is halal. It's impossible. We need to understand that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created everything in this world for our benefit, even if people may use it as, as uh, a harm for themselves. Allah says, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, He's created for you everything in this world. Now, the issue with social media is that it's changing every day. Before, when Facebook started, it was just... Oh, alhamdulillah, you know, we've been blessed with a child. Now it's, you know, a whole can of worms, it could be. So it's contingent, it's subjective to change, right? So we have a shar'i principle, al-hukmu ala shay' far'un an tasawwurihi. That whenever there's this contingency element, then you cannot give a uh, black and white or a bold ruling regarding a particular aspect. So there are principles that you know, he laid down um, in terms of the rulings. So I'll, I'll just summarize uh, what he's written here and you can go through the details. If you know, for example, that you're going to these apps to disobey the Almighty, hurt others, right, or waste your time, you're going there to look at explicit material, then this, you know, of course will be haram for you. If you're going there with a good intention, teaching a talent that you have, teaching the deen, different quotes of wisdom, then it is mabah, it is allowed for you. Right? It's, these are rational elements. You know, this is, it comes to the mind, it's simplistic, like it's to the point. If you know that you have these talents that you can utilize, in combating, for example, individuals out there who made it a purpose of their life to talk bad about Islam and equate it to terrorism of some sort. And you have the ability to you know, fight that in the best of ways, in a good way. Then it is wajib upon you, it is imperative that you engage in getting on these platforms. You know, subhanAllah, when I was at the Amja Con... Now, this was, this was just... You know, a small topic that was discussed at the conference. There were many major topics that uh, were discussed as well, which inshallah we can, uh, you know, bring, bring forth at other monthly dinners or programs. But one of the, uh, I would say, highlights of my, my being at that conference is we were, I was sitting down about to ask a question uh, to the mashayikh there. Uh, when it was a sister's turn, uh, she asked, or basically, it was the sister's turn to ask a question. The sisters were supposed to ask a question. So one of the sisters got up and in a painful voice, she said that, look at the damage that's happening on social media. And where are these mashayikh who have the ability to speak? Where are these scholars who Allah has given this knowledge of nubuwa to? Why are they not on these platforms? So that told me that, you know, I was, before going to Amja, I was like, I'm closing everything. I don't want to be on social. It's such a toxic life, so time consuming. But that, you know, painful voice motivated me to stay on, right? Whenever I could. That give the message that you have to give, ignore the haters and move on. So in this case, it becomes wajib, right? Because this is a part of life. Imagine a person is to say every scholar, for example, is to say that, you know, we're not going to uh, be imams anymore, we have, we're going to be professors. This will eliminate, what do you call it, a shar'i, a religious obligation that they're supposed to fulfill. In that likely manner, this is a part of life now. People are living on these things, right? If these ulama or scholars or academics or doctors or, or professionals, they are not on these platforms to give that Heartful advice that they're supposed to give Then who will do that job? Yeah. Or if I'm not Reacting to somebody Sabotaging my deen Even if it's not directly talking to them But just putting my message out there Who's going to do that? 
John from next door or the pastor from next door? No. I need to really build that enthusiasm, knowledge and charisma to, you know, bring about these, you know, to combat these aspects in the best of ways. Uh, there are various uh, maxims that he's put down. For example, anadhru fil ma'alat, right? The looking at the outcomes of things. If you, for example, see that the outcome of you being on these various platforms is positive, then your being there is positive. If the outcome is negative, automatically it's negative. But inshallah, let's just, uh, uh, oh yeah, uh, he quoted Sheikh Salah al-Sawi, which is min kibari al-ulama, one of the greatest scholars of you know, our, our nation here, you know, genuine alim, humble, scholarly. Uh, Sheikh Salah al-Sawi, he says that just like the t in, in, in brief, I'm not saying word to word what he mentioned, just like the TV became umum al-balwa, meaning, uh, you know, everybody is, is tested with this, the TV. In that likely manner, we are at such a point in time where social media, Facebook, Twitter, all these elements have become umum al-balwa, that they are, you know, generally impacting everyone. So... Uh, Sheikh Salah al-Sawi says that just as you can utilize the te television, you know, for good or bad, even the social media could be utilized for good or bad, hence it depends upon the user, right? So that is why you cannot have a general ruling of something being haram or halal. It will be based on your intentions, your aspirations and your actions. You get that? Once again, I'm going to repeat myself for the third or the fourth time, if you don't need it, you're happy without it, you're living life, then you don't need these pl platforms. If you are a professional, if you are a, a, a child, a young person, a, a young boy or a young girl, you have talents that you want to show, make sure you understand your limits. Right? It's as simple as that. There, it doesn't take Einstein to explain this concept. Uh, so... Sheikh Ibn Uthaymeen rahimahullah was asked about uh, you know, the beginning days of the internet, social media, uh, and TV, etc. Is it allowed for a person to utilize these for, for da'wah or for providing a good message? So he said, at that time, right, this is early 90s, or sorry, 1999 or before, uh, around that time, he said that it is mustahab and it's actually encouraged for a person to utilize these, uh, you know, new elements for the best of their being or for the best of their message. So utilize them for the da'wah that you have. Utilize them for the good. But, ensure, but make sure that you are understanding your responsibility and, and limitations in that regard. And many a times you slip. You slip big time. How does a person spend four and a half hours on this app? Only Allah knows. You just become so consumed to it. And once again, you become so consumed to such an extent that you're thinking in your mind, your subconscious mind, I want to get out. No, but I want to not watch the next video. But I want to get out. And then all of a sudden you hear the adhan of Isha. right? And from Maghrib to Isha, you were on that app. And it's happened to me as well. So it's very important that people uh, keep themselves grounded in this regard. When it comes to the social media element, you will see definite, you know, uh, haram products or haram pictures or prohibited, you know, uh, revealing material. So in that we follow the principles of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, which he said, لا تتبعوا النظرة النظرة فإن لك الأولى وليست لك الآخرة. That, you know, don't follow that first look with a second look. Right? Of course, if that look is based on uh, shahwa and passion and desire, for the first look, you've been forgiven. It wasn't intentional. For the second look, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take you to task. So, uh, as you see, he has a segment here where he has shown, um, yeah, where he has shown the general principles of using, using so, social media. So, for example, if the goal of the, and purpose of the platform is in violation of the Sharia, right, such as engaging in uh, supporting, 
you know, LGBT content uh, or haram relationships or engaging in uh, games uh, or various elements which are very crude and have bad materials in it, then of course the ruling is as such that don't engage in uh, transgression and sin. And if the goal is positive, then it's permissible. Now he has uh, a few uh, sub goals that he's written or sub goals that he's highlighted here. If the goal of the uh, platform itself is permissible and legitimate with no minimum violations, then the use of that platform would be considered permissible like LinkedIn. You, uh, I think some jobs require that you have a LinkedIn, right? LinkedIn. So if uh, there's nothing wrong that happens on that platform or the damage is minimal, then you know you can basically utilize that platform. If it, for example, there are you know clear violations and these violations are prevalent, then it should be avoided. For example, dating apps, right? Dating is haram in Islam where you for dating at such a uh, you know level where you're going to meet with the opposite gender in private and various elements will happen, various things will go on which are prohibited by Islam. That will, of course, that's haram. And, you know, if it's, uh, uh, there are violations, uh, but it could be controlled, such as Instagram, TikTok, you know, YouTube, Facebook, then it'll depend on your usage. Are you using it for the good or the bad? And finally, if the violations are indispensable part of the platform, uh, for example, you cannot avoid the filtering, you cannot avoid the various negative elements. He writes music, tick, you know, uh, pop culture, rapping, uh, bad lyrics, then you are not allowed, or sorry, you should avoid using such platforms. And he blatantly said on the stage, you know, a young alim, he basically blatantly said that I, I would not allow my children to have TikTok, right? So this is the new trend today. I would not allow my children to have TikTok. This is what he said. Because of how, by default, when you open that platform, it just opens to vices. I don't know if anybody here has TikTok. Yeah. But make a general account. You will see the first time you sort of start strolling, scrolling or strolling, what kind of fuhash and vile elements come on that, you know. Why are you on that when you want to be a successful leader in the future? Why are you on that if you have no purpose to be on that? If you are there you know, legitimately, legitimately to learn on behalf of your class, classroom work that somebody's given you or whatever, or you have a forte of some sort like poetry or whatnot, and that's all that you know, comes your way, then of course with limitations that would be allowed. But why are you on that if you're not doing nothing, right? If you're not doing anything of that sort? <clears throat> and then uh, he goes into the different rulings uh, that I uh, sort of went over in, in brief. Wajib, you know, Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala tells us, وَعِدُّ لَهُمْ مَا اسْتَطَعْتُمْ مِنْ قُوَّةِ Right? That prepare uh, means of strength for yourselves in retaliation to the damages that people are doing. Hence for the scholars at some level, if they're there to present a uh, message combating, for example, um, for example, for example, people are uh, highlight, uh, you know, disrespecting the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, or they're ma mentioning misinformation about a Quranic verse, or Aisha radhiyallahu anha. I'm just giving the, you know, sort of the common examples. Then for them, it's wajib to be upon, wajib, right? It's a compulsory uh, upon a group, right? Uh, if not all the scholars to be on such platforms, then of course he goes into uh, the categories of. Mandub allowed mabah, right? Once again, also uh, allowed permissible makruh if it takes you away from responsibilities, obligations, parents. Uh, and then, of course, haram, as I've explained many examples. And then he highlights a brief summary. Inshallah, we can quickly read through it. So social media is a powerful tool that can be used for good and evil. Allah has blessed the people of this time with these types of tremendous techno te technology as a unique way to fulfill the purpose of our existence and call to Him. There is no doubt that the benefits of social media can be utilized and taken advantage of with the right level of control, filtration and purposeful use. It is also imperative that safeguards are put into place to avoid 
the harms and the evils of social media. May it be personally or collectively as a family. This is especially the case uh, for those who are in authority, like parents, teachers, educational administrators, uh, administrators with their children and students who are vulnerable and unaware of the det detrimental use of social media. The ruling of social media and uh, associated smart devices in Islam is directly linked to these safeguards and control that allow for the minimization of haram exposure. There must be a concentrated effort from both individuals and parents to do their part to monitor, limit, and control access as much as possible, given the high risk that is present in unfiltered social media use. If this is done using the guided principles or the guiding principles of the Sharia, the benefits of social media can far outweigh the harms and can lead to great benefit for the believing individual, family, and ummah as a whole. Once again, at, at, after the presentation, somebody asked Sheikh Omar that but mention a clear ruling on social media. Once again, he went back to that principle. Al hukmu ala shayi far'un an tasawurihi that you know think these things are contingent. They are you know how many times have has you know Instagram for example changed since since it came out or Twitter. Right? These things change all the time. You cannot give a blanket ruling. You can give these principles that I've mentioned here and that he's mentioned. That for example, you know, utilizing it for whatever you're utilizing it for will determine the hukum. But you cannot say this particular platform is haram or halal unless it is all unless it is made for haram or made for halal. So for example, once again, the extreme example of this is dating apps. Yeah? These are haram. Why? Because th these are antithetical to the deen. In terms of you know TikTok, you cannot say it's haram or halal because it'll it'll be based on upon based upon your usage or your filtration. And then he basically ends the presentation by uh, having an appendix and methods and types of control software. And you know, this, this is a general sheikh. You know, when you look at this, you would think he's a computer engineer. MashaAllah, tabarakallah. You know, he has highlighted uh, the various common platforms that we utilize on a daily basis and how to really utilize them to our maximum benefit and not our maximum harm. He has highlighted how you can uh, bring about some filtration methods on Google. Once again, when I'm speaking, I'm not speaking about your children. I'm speaking about myself and yourselves as well. Many a times we think we have a uh, full pass, right? We have a uh, green light when it comes to our usage of these things, but then we apply these elements to our children. No, that is blatant nifaq. Right? If you don't want your children to be doing something, then you should yourself not uh, be engaged uh, you know, in these aspects. I remember uh, getting a very difficult call of distress from one of my, my colleagues who said, Sheikh, I don't know what to do. One of the daughters of my community called me and said that I found pornography on my father's phone. What am I supposed to do? How am I supposed to look at him in the same way? So just as you're wondering uh, how to safeguard your children, this applies to you first. You know, when you're in that airplane, you put that mask on first before you put it on your child at the occasion of loss of oxygen, right? So he highlights how to uh, bring about filtration in terms of, you know, Google, uh, even, you know, YouTube uh, on iOS or Android uh, devices, Settings, go to YouTube, general, autoplay, blocking specific videos or specific channels, uh, and, and, and it's easier on iOS, it's uh, even more easier on your desktop, and if you want more, more details, he's put a link down. TikTok is, uh, once again, you, you have a filtration uh, as well. Uh, more details are on that link, but you have a filtration method for under 13, you can only see videos, not, you know, not search and comment, 13 to 15, you can upload videos, uh, only friends could see them, 16 to 17, you can live stream and you know, directly message other users. So based on the user of that app, that TikTok uh, app, you know, uh, TikTok has set 
uh, certain guidelines. But once again, to tell you the truth, TikTok is not perfect. They may ban a video of yours talking about Palestine, but they will not ban videos where people are reve revealing their bodies. Yeah, this is TikTok. The, that's their guidelines. So then he said the top priority is avoid it, right? If you can't control it. And then uh, uh, he goes on, uh, you know, uh, to basically mention uh, settings for your chi children's safety. Once again, this is all TikTok because of uh, how, how detailed, you know, the filtration process is. Um, yeah. And then uh, you, can, you, have, you can have content uh, restrictions for your child. Um, I would say my simple advice, once again, I don't know if you'll listen to me or not. Many people, you know, I say things, but they don't listen to me, uh, would be to buy a simple phone for your child if they need it, right? If they need it, for example, they go to school and they need to call you, give them that simple phone. Uh, that would be my advice. Uh, unless they need it for school, they need a smartphone or an iPad for school, whatever it may be, they shouldn't, they shouldn't have any smartphones at that hand. Are you kidding me? At that occasion where that, the hormones are erupting all over the place, you're just giving a free device to their hands without filtration. Unless you've raised your child, right, to be <laughs> Jibreel alayhi uh, salam, things might not go well. Um, our teacher used to tell us that there was a cat Inshallah, I'll end with this, and there, thereafter it'll be Adhan time. There was a cat that became a friend of a sheikh, just a you know parable. And the sheikh started making its tarbiyah, uh, you know, t uh, reading Quran in front of it, mentioning a hadith, different poetry and islah. You know how we go to the sheikh for islah. Uh, and you know, people started marveling that, mashallah, you know. Uh, uh, you know, this baraka cat, right? This baraka cat is sitting in a particular masjid. So another sheikh comes into that neighborhood. He said, well, you know, what baraka cat? Today, let's, you know, have a test for that baraka cat. So he brings a mouse into the gathering of the sheikh and he lets it loose. And at once, you know, uh, the sabr that the sheikh taught that cat, the patience, the saum, the is that cat just jumps on the mouse and rips it into smithereens. So what did the other sheikh say? Every cat is a Sufi. Every cat is pious until it sees a mouse. Yeah? Every cat is a Sufi until it sees a mouse. So don't let your children's children or yourselves uh, you know, see that mouse that you're going to just jump at or that piece of cake which is harmful for your health. Uh, just jump at it and destroy your life uh, in one way or another. In terms of, I, I, don't, I didn't cover it, in terms of married people, do you know one of the ma major problems that's coming to the scholars today? It's like, I don't love my wife anymore. Are you kidding me? What, what do you mean? It's like, no, there are way more beautiful people than my wife. Husband, wife says the same thing. Why? Because we're looking where we're not supposed to be looking. Or... We are looking at those people the way we're not supposed to be looking at them, right? As I always say that if it's a woman that appears on your phone, <clears throat> may it be on an ad or something, if she's older than you, that's your mother. If she's younger than you, then that's your sister, right? If she's older than you, inshallah, she's your aunt. Don't look at her in another way. Otherwise, you're going to be causing much chaos for yourselves. When you don't look at Others with another of shahwa, yeah, passion, desire, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes your spouse the most beautiful person in your eyes. But once your eyes are roaming all over the block, right, going to town, hitting the ground, then back to town, back home, you know, hitting the ground again, you know, you're going all over the place, eyeballing, basketball is dribbling, that is when you have these problems, right? So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us some sort of a benefit from this brief talk. As I said, as a follow-up to this, inshallah, we'll have different weeks where I'll mention the adab, right? The adab, the etiquettes, once again written by Sheikh Omar and another scholar of using social media, if you're going to utilize it. Uh, but once again, if you don't have any benefit of being on these platforms, best to avoid it. If you are on these platforms, Protect your 
self before your child, if you are once again on these platforms, ensure that you are inculcating the taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this we end, with this we end. وَآخِرُ دَعْوَانًا الْحَمْدُ اللَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ وَصَلَّى اللَّهُ وَسَلَّمَ وَبَارَكَ عَلَى سَيِّدِنَا مُحَمَّدٍ وَعَلَى آلِهِ وَصَحْبِهِ أَجْمَعِينَ If you have any questions, inshallah feel free to ask. Even if you wish to tackle a point, you know, with criticism that I mentioned, please feel free to do so before the adhan is given. You have any questions? Sisters, brothers? No questions at all? Any comments? Jazakallah khairan. Yeah, Atiq. I have seen them in the, in the everywhere, the small kids and the girls. They have their phones at the age of eight and nine. Yeah. And when, when your child sees that, oh, my friend has saying, why are you this company? The, now, this is a problem. This is definitely a problem. We need to be uh, as truthful as possible with our child. Say that, look, just as there are individuals in, the world, in this world who are making major mistakes, Maybe these children are making mistakes by having these uh, phones in their hands. Just because somebody else has something, it doesn't make that right. You know, eight, nine year old and you have a phone, that doesn't make sense, right? I remember, you know, just a lesson uh, that I'm giving myself and you. From South Africa, there would be lines of people, yeah, waiting to call their back home countries. We had about 78 countries in our madrasa, in in in. in uh, Darul Ulum Zakaria. But we would, you know, discipline ourselves to use those pay phones in order to ring back home so our parents may call us on those individual numbers. A anything is possible, right? But you just need to be that person of action. And another thing that a person should keep in mind in respect to this dialogue that we are having don't have such a connection with your children to such an extent where they're unable to express what's in their heart towards you. Be friends of your children so they don't resort to other friends. Be your, be your children's friends, you know. That program that I was talking about, Sawa'idul Ikha, it's a group of scholars that get together or used to get together and, you know, every year in Ramadan. I, I remember, you know, when I heard that psychologist scholar slash, you know, psychologist slash Muslim scholar saying that you need to kiss your children 45 times a day. I'm like, how does, you know, even some of the sheikhs sitting there were shocked. What do you mean? Like this, you know, kiss and hug your children, you know, 45 times a day. This is, this is something that you have to do, right? And then, and then you introspect the life of the Prophet wasallam. how close of a relationship he had with his children. Uh, any harm came to their life. Any trouble, they couldn't figure out something. The first point of reference was Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam for them. Their father, yeah, not some uncle in the community, or their friend who might give them possible right advice or possible wrong advice. Be be friends to your children. You should have such a relationship with your children that you can talk about anything with them. Right? I even go to the extent of saying that, and the you know our. Uh, Arab brothers will say, Aib, Aib. What do you mean, Aib? Get up and kiss your wife in front of your child on her forehead. Hug her. Feed her a morsel. Teach her how, how, teach them how they should treat their spouses in the future. What do you mean, Aib? Yeah? This is the practice of your Habib, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Once you have that connection, Brother Atiq, I guarantee you with your child, there will be nothing that will, you know, bother you from them. And I always confide in the advice of Ali radiallahu anhu. What an amazing advice. Inshallah, let's end with this because it's salah time. He says so beautifully, you know, and so confidently. And this relates to our dialogue today of how you should protect in the best of ways by befriending them, having that trust bond with them. You know, not being, uh, you know, not OCDing about them or prying on them or spying on them when they don't want you to. But building that relationship since the beginning where everything is beautiful and clear and, and pure in between you guys. What does Ali radiallahu anhu say? He says, لَعِبْهُ سَبْعًا Play with your child for seven years. Okay? If you're not playing with your child for the big first seven years, there's automatically a problem. Right? Number two, 
adibhu sab'an. Teach them adab and etiquette for seven years. Why? Because they already have that, you know, cl you know, the good bond with you because they look at you as your, your you know, playmate. So they'll learn that adab from you. You can't do the opposite. You can't teach them adab from the beginning without having a soft spot in their hearts. What does he say thereafter? He says, ثُمَّ صَاحِبْهُ سَبْعًا Thereafter, be their friend for another seven years. لِلَّهِ دَرُّ عَلِي بِنَ بِطَالِبُ What does he say thereafter? Look at the confidence in this man. He says, ثُمَّ تُرُكْهُ Then leave them. Because they will come back to you. <laughs> they will come back to you because you did your job. Let us be friends to our children and, our, and their playmates. Let's teach them adab. <clears throat> Everything's not just work and work and work and making money and stress of back home and stress of what your, you know, this cousin did back home and this property. No. All that will go away. مَا عِنْدَكُمْ يَنْفَدُ وَمَا عِنْدَ اللَّهِ بَاقِ from Indallahi Baq, some of the scholars they mention, Ma Indakum Yanfadu, what what is with you will end, the wealth, the tangible wealth. Ma Indallahi Baq, some of the scholars they interpret interpret this verse to mean that the children that among among these benefits is the children that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave gave you and you made you know the best of moments with them and they became champions of goodness in this world and hence you have a treasure of rewards based on that, that goodness that you did for your children waiting for you in the hereafter. And then, yeah, there is a better side for it as well. Sometimes you do try your best. May Allah protect us and things, things don't work out. And I gave the advice before. Confide in Nuh alayhi yeah. What can you do? You're at the end of the day human. Allah will reward you for the effort, not the results. But inshallah, if you try to follow these principles, most probably there could be you know, positive results, bi-idhnillah. May Allah make our lives full of positivity. Inshallah, whatever I said was that was good. Uh, that is from Allah, tabarak wa ta'ala. Uh, and whatever I was mistaken in, or whatever I have, uh, you know, caused shortcomings in, in terms of my speech, or the ramblings, that is from myself, and of course, shaitan. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us all. Utilize the blessings of Allah to the maximum, in the most beneficial ways. And avoid these blessings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to become destroyers of your akhirah or consequences of the most negative situations to come about in this life before the akhirah for you. Use them to the maximum in the best of ways. Avoid the damages of every blessing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has, has provided for you. Wa akhir da'wan. Alhamdulillah. Jazakumullah khair.